Lee Steinberg, the famous uh, sports agent, has been raising flags about the severity of head injuries in the NFL long before it became the big issue it is today. Now the concussion conversation is about to get even bigger with a new movie coming out starring Will Smith. I found a disease that no one has ever seen. Repetitive head trauma chokes the brain. The NFL does not want to talk to you. You turned on the lights and gave their biggest boogeyman a name. You're going to war with a corporation that owns the day of the week. No proof was presented today because there simply isn't any. They have to listen to us. This is bigger than they are. You have no idea how bad this could get. The movie is called Concussion, and Lee Steinberg, uh, you were talking about this, I don't know, 19... Late 80s. Late 80s, yeah. when nobody else was talking about it. Back when we would say things like, oh, he's down on the, he's down on the field right now, he got his bell rung, he'll get out for a minute and come right back in, right? Had his bell rung. All the linguistics around then were like he was popped to the moon, Monday Night Football had two helmets colliding together, That's which right. yeah. would have produced a concussion. Uh, I had a crisis of conscience back in the 80s. I'm representing half the starting quarterbacks in the NFL and 90 players, and I'm watching them get hit in the head. We go to doctors. They can't tell us how many or too many or what the magic number is. Mm -hmm. So we started holding concussion conferences, first in the early 90s in, here in Southern California. And we finally got doctors to say, Bennett Amalo, who this movie's about, that three or more concussions occasions an exponentially higher rate of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, premature senility, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, and depression. So Warren Moon and I held one in 2005, and I called it a ticking time bomb in an undiagnosed health epidemic. Every time an offensive lineman hits a defensive lineman at the inception of every football play, it produces a low-level sub-concussive event. So you can have an offensive lineman who played high school, college, and professional football who's had 10,000 concussions, none of which have been diagnosed. And, and let, us, let's, let us remember, we tend to think of the game. Most of these happen in practice. Many of them. But just remember, every time those lines hit, it does a little bit of brain shift. So we're producing a generation, a large chunk of which will have uh, brain damage and dementia. And this is the brain. It's what me makes you a sentient, conscious person. So if 50% of the mothers in this country understood these facts and told their teenage boys, you can play any sport but not tackle football, it wouldn't kill football, it would just change the socioeconomics so the same people will play football that now box. What do you think about the new technology coming out, like the new helmets that would help detect or avoid concussions? There's now, to me, someone as you know, the outsider looking in, it sounds like a good idea, but as an agent, someone representing a player, let's say, would that work against the player when it comes time to negotiation, how much money that player can make based on whatever the information was contracted from that helmet? There's a new helmet done by Tate Technology that uses coil and compression to attenuate the energy flow and just push the energy out, which drops it by as much as 50%. Current helmets just protect against skull fracture. So helmetry is one area we can use. Better diagnosis on the sidelines, so you pick up the subconcussive hit, which is the uh, rest of the iceberg. And then there's a thing called Prevacus, which is a nasal spray that can be employed right after you get hit so the brain doesn't swell. Ultimately, the best thing we have right now, like at the Amen Clinic, is hyperbaric oxygen, where they... Right, I want to take, take you back. You, you dropped a little bombshell at the end of your last sentence here before the, the next question. You said if 50% of uh, mothers don't let their kids play, eventually football will be like boxing. Boxing, you know, I'm a boxing fan, but it is a relatively dead sport. It's a niche sport. People are aware of a few big events. There are some hardcore fans, but it is way over on the side. Football is America. You're talking about that dramatic a change? Football dominates American culture right now, especially the NFL. The seven top-rated shows a month into last season, nighttime Nielsen ratings, all 
Nighttime right. NFL football. 45 million people play fantasy football. It's our obsession. So this won't happen very quickly. Uh, it's not like players are going to jump out of the game. I'm talking about trends that occur over 10, 15, 20 years. Right now, football is dominant, which is why we have to do things to fix it and make it safer. All right. Another question for you uh, before we run out of time here. Uh, would you have a kid play football? I had two sons and they both played. So even knowing everything I knew, even having Hall of Fame players and the rest of it, uh, they went ahead and played because football teaches camaraderie, courage under pressure, teamwork, a whole lot of values. This is, I was using the phrase cognitive dissonance. We know, we know <laughs> this and yet we do that, mm -hmm. right? Except that we're out in the forefront trying to get reform, trying to make it safer. Okay, one other question before you go. The big one. What teams are we getting yes. here? <laughs> well, who's coming to LA? So I was chairman to save the Rams way back in 1994 and fought nice, hard for Nice them. job, Lee. <laughs> yes, I was very successful. <clears throat> Haven't they been here all these years? No, no, no. no, no. Uh, so anyway, uh, I had thought for some time it would be the Rams, and I still hope it's the Rams, although I'd rather not steal someone else's team. But the league is moving right now in the direction of solving two stadium problems at once, which would be San Diego and Oakland, both of which seem to have no solution by moving them to Carson. So they're coming. 2016, are you ready for some football? Because it's coming back. Wow. Uh, the name of your book is? Oh. My <laughs> the, <laughs> agent. Yes. the Agent. The Very, Agent. Very uh, It's hard creative. to remember. It's hard to. <laughs> Did you see the movie Jerry Maguire? Show me the money. That's, That's right. Well, it tells you all about it. Okay.